Welcome back to session two. In our last session, we introduced the mental model, the happy path for optimizing your LLM performance and explore the limits of prompt engineering. If you missed it, you can catch up here. In this video, we will dive into techniques like RAG uh, and fine tuning and discuss combining all of those techniques together. Plus, we will tackle the big question, how good is good enough for production? So stick around to find out. It's a process of retrieving content to augment the LLMs before generating an answer. So in other words, we are giving very specific domain specific context to the LLM to solve a task. That's called rank. All right. So something to remember is when we are using RAG, we are introducing another axis, right? Another factor into the equation that we need to optimize. This chart here actually explains it extremely well. If you look at this, it's like a 2D plank that we have. Mm -hmm. So what we want to be is this area. So on the right hand side and the upper part is positive or correct. So the X axis is the answer and the Y axis is the retrieval. So what we want is to get the correct answers and correct retrieval. So that's where we want to be. So the top left is where we have the correct retrieval, but the answer that LLM generates is wrong, which is this area here. The third zone, the bottom left, is the retrieval is incorrect, and therefore the answer also is incorrect right? This is something that we definitely want to avoid. And the bottom right is when the retrieval is actually correct. So we have the correct context, but the LLM is unable to generate the correct answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for each one of these areas, then we have to fine tune or optimize something. So mm -hmm. when we are on the top right, everything is perfect, right? Nothing to worry about. It's where we want to be. Top left, the, re the retrieval is okay, is working more or less, it's, but it's not complete. So there are different approaches how mm -hmm. to optimize that. In that case, we can use, you know, we can fine tune chunking and all that, right? Because the retrieval is working, but not 100%. So the problem is coming from the chunking mm -hmm. or maybe the embedding. The bottom left is when the retrieval is completely wrong. And if the retrieval is wrong, the LLM will anyway produce the wrong answer. So here, then we have to work on the search because why the retrieval is wrong. We have mm. to optimize that. Is it because of the search algorithm, right? So we have to tune our search. And the bottom right is when the retrieval is correct, but because of the behavior, the prompt maybe, or because of the model parameters, the LLM is not able to generate the correct answer. So we have to tune these two things. Maybe the prompt is bad, so LLM doesn't figure it out. Or maybe we need to do a fine tune or something like that. So what is really fine tuning? Fine tuning is the process of training an LLM on a very small domain specific data set to optimize the behavior of the LLM for a particular task. That is called fine tuning. And by training, I don't mean that we train from scratch, meaning that we just teach LLM an extra skill using that very small domain specific data set. And there are two main reasons that we may want to go with fine tuning. One is to improve the accuracy, of course. That's the main reason that we want to go with fine tuning because other approaches, for instance, didn't work. And the second reason is to improve the model efficiency. Because when you fine tune mm -hmm. a model, you basically consume a lot, like less tokens. And the reason for that is when you don't fine tune, you basically have to explain everything in the prompt to make sure that the LLM will work properly. But when you teach that a skill, then you don't need all of those instructions as part of the prompt. So basically you are consuming less tokens. Another one, another reason is by using a smaller model. So when you use a smaller model, we are like the model is obviously is more efficient. If you want to do fine tuning, three major steps you have to follow. First, you need to prepare a data set of training examples. The second step is then you would go and train the model. And there are multiple frameworks for doing that. And the third is the evaluation. You have to evaluate that, okay, on a held out data set that 
what is the accuracy of this fine-tuned model on this uh, specific held out data set. Two things to notice and to remember when you are preparing data is always start with a very small data set, but focus on the quality of the data set because the quality of the data set is extremely crucial, okay? And the second point mm -hmm. is you always want to make sure that the examples that you have in your data set are representative of what the model will see in the real world because it needs to learn and it doesn't learn by just showing some imaginary examples where it's not going to see it in, in production. Yeah, I'm sure there are ways to automate evaluation there pipeline. Maybe we can talk about it yes. in another episode. Evaluation itself is actually a very active research area and there are a lot of approaches mm -hmm. to make it automated. We will talk about right. it in another video. Mm -hmm. All right. And the last but not least is when you actually fine tune and use RAG together. Okay. Sometimes mm -hmm. it happens. Sometimes when you go and, you know, do some evaluation and that both the context and the behavior are both wrong. So if there is a use case where both of these two have some issues, then the approach is to combine these two methods together. The benefits mm -hmm. are by doing fine tuning, you minimizing the number of tokens, you can teach a very complex behavior to the LLM. That's another benefit of this fine tuning and RAG. And if you use RAG as well, mm -hmm. then you are injecting extra context into the prompt, which is going to eventually improve the accuracy and performance of the model. I have a question. If you have extra context, sometimes people put it in the prompt. Sometimes people take that out and put it as a RAG system. For instance, the few shot step, if people are starting to want to feed in a few examples, you can do either way. You can go with a rag, and you can go with a potential prompt engineer way. Okay. So do you have any suggestions which one is better than other? So what I would do is that I will just go with a few shot, meaning adding a few examples in the prompt, right? Um, okay. And... Then what the next step would be, instead of adding the examples, like fixed examples, then I try to dynamically just bring some examples, right? So, which is RAG. So we can even bring the examples dynamically and feed them into the prompt. But what I would do, I always go with just a few examples in the prompt. And if that solves the problem, then that's it. What does dynamically include some few short uh, examples mean? Meaning that depending on the user question, you don't need to always include a list of fixed examples LLM can learn from and mm. based on that answer the question. You could have hundreds of examples. So you don't want to include all of them in the prompt as well. So depend on the user question, mm. you may find some relevant examples and then only include them in the prompt. So this is when you okay. dynamically do that. But if you always include, regardless of what question the user is asking, you always include these five examples, then it's a few shot learning, which is fixed. But if you change these examples dynamically, depending on the question, that's dynamic few shot. Right. And the fine line is how large your context window is going to go because if you're including a lot of examples in your prompt, right? The larger the that's context. That's you don't want to do that, right? It is, uh, you don't want to include hundreds right. of examples, yeah. things like that, right? Yeah. To clarify, it may not be a rag uh, problem. It could be after prompt engineering, you should just go to fine tuning, right? Because these examples indicate not extra knowledge, but actually model behavior. Then you should really bake that into the model instead of using RAG. Yes. If you have too many examples right. and you want to use all of them, you probably don't want to do that. So a better approach potentially right. could be just use those examples and fine tune the model. All right. The million dollar question. <laughs> so now, yes. So the question is how much accuracy is actually good enough for production? And the answer is it depends, right? We have to look at each use case, but a general rule of thumb is you always look from two perspectives, right? From a business point of view or perspective and from a technical point of view. From business perspective, you need to do some evaluation and assess the cost of LLM failures versus the savings or gains from implementing a successful approach. 
So, and uh, there is a very good example about a customer support uh, use case where actually it breaks down how much it saves, how much it costs and everything. But essentially what you want to do just to evaluate the cost, right? It's, is it worth it or not? What if the, the failures are so dramatic, right? So critical that you can't really like make up for it. That's something that you have to reconsider. Yeah. So basically by putting a price point on your uh, LOM failure cases and escalation cases, other options that will can happen using this LOM solution, then you can back engineer a level of accuracy that you can actually tolerate. So it's like a risk-based uh, assessment of how good you need to be in order to right, make total sense of the solution. Set, that's the solution. exactly right. So you have to do some risk assessment, you know, if you want to really right. do it from the business standpoint, right? The second exactly. perspective is from a technical point of view. Um, so you need to make sure that whatever approach you go with and you implement, you are going to handle the failures gracefully. So what if something goes wrong, then you need to make sure that it's going to be handled to some human and it doesn't really disrupt the user experience. From a technical point of view, you want to yeah. give a very smooth user experience, but at the same time, use all of the goodies of using LLMs. So you have to look at these two aspects and then based on that, you implement the solution to see what approach, how much accuracy is enough in your use case. If the use case, for instance, is, mm. I don't know, very critical, you are doing some reserving you know, flights for people using LLMs. If that goes wrong, what's going to happen? Or instead of charging $100, then you charge $1,000, things like that. You always have to look at yeah. the use case and based on that, decide how complicated I want to go with and then how much accuracy is good for me. Yeah. That makes total sense. Thank you so much, Mehdi. As always, I'll see you next time. See ya.